guys! Today is a big day for us, so we're going to pick our brand new AIS transponder, which we are really really excited about. And at the end of the video, we're going to tell you why it's even more exciting than just a regular upgrade. We're going to go pick it at Sopromar, which is the place that has been helping us with all of our equipment repairs and upgrades so far. Essentially, that's where we've been every day since we arrived in Lagos. Ever since that we started our boat life and we went all the way from Stockholm down here to Lagos, we have never seen something like this. So we're taking you guys to this place and hopefully our friends there, they're super nice guys, they, they can give us a little tour. That would be, that'd be fun. All right, let's do this. You don't want to film inside? No? in Lagos we got in touch with this company called Sopromar regarding our radar, our AIS, our autopilot and all kind of stuff that was getting broken on board and we thought that it was you know just uh, the local electrician and when we arrived here like this it's 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 enormous we have never seen this before so apparently they're building a new paint shop I had never seen a paint shop for boats before. We have by far the biggest chandlery that we've seen. This is our friend Ricardo. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. Let's go for the AIS. Sweet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Thanks. Oh, this is so cool. Look at, look at Ryan's face. <laughs> Are you already opening the box, Ryan? Yeah. It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. This is a palace for boat repairs. Because we also have uh, accommodations. You have accommodations? Yeah, rooms. What? Really? Really. Suites. What? We have three suites. This place is insane. It is huge. Oh my. Are we in the yard? Yeah, you are in the yard. Oh, wow. So how, many, how many boats do you have here? Around 220. 220 on the hard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is the restaurant. Yeah. We heard it's good. Crazy. I, okay, you know, but I have to ask, why do you have rooms? Sometimes big refittings allow people to, to move. And instead of going for the hotel, they are here near to the boat, they can work on the boat, in the end they can come here, yeah. have a shower, go for a beer. Yeah, very and nice. Everything, everything in, just in one place. So like yeah. our friends, like from Boutavant, when they had their issues with they their... Just here. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know that boat yards could be so advanced. <laughs> no, but seriously. We also have workers. Ah, okay, so you could For work. people who need to have space to remove the things from the boat. Yeah, okay. The engines to store stuff, whatever they want, whatever they have inside. Yeah. Yeah. We have nine, nine lockers. Okay. This is Boat Refit Palace. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, it's for the, the couples like us, you know, yeah. who arrive here, they're tired, they're sleep deprived, they argue. This is where I can send you when you misbehave. <laughs> you get a call from me next week, you know what, you know what happened. <laughs> Ricardo, uh, so... <laughs> I need some space. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's great! She kicks me yeah. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Okay! <laughs> la la la! <laughs> This is a nice boat. I, I like this. I like that one. Great. 
thanks for showing us around. Okay, thank you, thank you very it's, much. It's a great thank facility. you for coming. Yeah, thanks for <laughs> having <laughs> us out. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Yeah, so much for the local electrician, huh? <laughs> Bye! All the way down from Stockholm to Lagos, it's been super challenging for us to find really good boat stores to buy the parts that we needed to repair the things that broke. And most of the time we would have to order from European web stores and wait for the deliveries and sometimes that postponed our departure and that's not the best feeling. So when we arrived here in Lagos, it was just really nice to find this big, well-assorted marine store with a lot of competent people to work with, who spoke English very well, and who you could just call whenever we needed them. So before we go over to installing the AIS, I would really like to take this opportunity to extend a big thank you to Ricardo, Luis and Arturo from Sopromar. You guys were awesome, it was such a joy to work with you. And guys, if you're ever cruising down the coast of Portugal and you need repairs or refits or parts, Lagos is a great stop. Give a call to Ricardo, he's a super cool guy. Alright, and now we go back to the boat, we install the AIS and uh, we clean the toilets. Hi guys, so today we're going to take a first look at AIS, the Automatic Identification System, which is something a lot of boats are getting on board today. It's a really cool system, and I'm gonna explain a little bit about what the system is, what transceiver we just got, and I'm gonna show you how we install it. AIS is a system at which you can transmit, if you have a transmitter, you can transmit all kinds of information about your boat. The name of the boat, call sign of the boat, the heading, the speed over the ground. Any vessel with a receiver can then take that information in and see, okay, there's a boat over there, that's the name of the boat, and that's where it's going. And this could be a potential conflict and when that conflict might occur. Boats that have a transceiver would be able to transmit information and receive information. Some boats, like Polar Seal today, only have a receiver, and so we can get information from other boats but other boats can't see our information so it's good for us we can see what's out there but other boats can't see us today we are going to install the AIS 700 from Raymarine which is a transceiver so after today if all goes well other ships will be able to see our information as well and we'll be able to see theirs when we first started looking at AIS transceivers we looked at the Raymarine AIS 6 50, which is actually being discontinued and now we've gotten the AIS 700 and the big difference between the two was that the 700 includes a splitter. What is a splitter and why is that important? Well, AIS uses the same frequency range as your VHF radio. So when I make a call on the VHF, the AIS is using that same information. So what a splitter does is it allows us to use the same antenna on top of the mask for both systems and it will briefly disconnect the VHF communication system in order for my AAS to work and it will briefly disconnect the AIS if I need to transmit on the VHF. So with this, we're able just to use the antenna on top of the mast, it's really cool. Hopefully it's gonna be easy to do, but as all of us boat people know, the simplest project always takes about five times longer and requires about four trips to the boat store more than you think. In full disclosure, I have spent the entire morning today rewiring our VHF lines because in a project I did yesterday, I had to cut the end of our VHF line and rerun the wire for a story that can be saved for another time. <laughs> so now what we're gonna do is install the AIS. Currently our AIS, it's a Raymarine 250 receiver, is located right beside me, right underneath here. And it has the VHF line in and VHF line out. And this has the same, so we have an in, out. We will be installing a new GPS receiver that is just for the AIS. And then there'll be a power cable and a cable for our NMEA0183 connection because we have an older Ray Marine system. So it's another thing that's nice about this unit. You can connect it to new systems. You can connect it to older systems. It will still work. So what I'm gonna do now is crawl underneath here and take a few pictures of the NMEA connections just to make sure I remember how they all are. And then I will disconnect all the lines and then we'll start connecting this one. Okay. So, I think I have all the pictures I need. <laughs> now what I will do is just start disconnecting the wires. Now for the new one. 
Uh, you can see here, the size difference is uh, pretty great. So this is the old receiver, this is the new transceiver. So it's doing new function, transmitting and receiving, and the size is quite a bit smaller. So pretty cool. So right now what I'm gonna do is just go through and start stripping some of these wires. You'll see me holding, the stripper is a little funny because I'm a lefty and the world's not made for lefties. Just another problem, just another boat problem. One lesson I have learned over the years is not to start putting all the pieces together unless you know the system is working because then you might have to rip it all out again. Super frustrating. Luckily, the way this is set up right now, I have the ability to put all the pieces together with it being outside. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it all together. I'm gonna do a bit of the install on the computer, try it out on the chart plotter, and we'll see if it works. So just finish inputting all the data into the AIS. So that's our MMSI number, call sign, and ship for information. And now, I'm trying to see if it works. So I'm just looking at other vessels and we have a friend ship uh, that's out in the anchorage out there, Boutavon, and we're gonna try to get them on the VHF and make sure that's still working and see if we can see them on the AIS. Boutavon, Boutavon, polar seal, polar seal. Boutable. I'm having issues with the VHF, so I'm able to see ships in the harbor, but not much out. So I think we have a problem with the connection on the VHF, so I'm gonna have to do a bit of troubleshooting of that, but I don't think I'll get to that today. I think what I'll do the rest of the day is finish the install of the GPS antenna, run the wire, get the unit installed, and clean up. I just got back to the boat after spending a couple of hours editing. Ryan is installing the AIS. And this is how the boat looks. Woo! I do not understand what is going on here. Why is the trash bin out? I think that we went through some kind of boat apocalypse. I'm trying to find a part. What I found. But what happened down here? What do you mean? What do you mean? So, it's 9 o'clock at night. I started the project at 4.30. It's been a bit of a long day, but it's been pretty smooth. Everything works, it's just my VHF antenna cable isn't optimal. So the next step is to just get a hold of some better tools, and then it should be all dandy. Everything should be okay. <laughs> What are you doing, Ryan? Well, you see, last night, uh, thinking about why the VHF isn't working very well, I had a thought. Earlier this year, when I was trying to fix a TV antenna, I looked up with my binoculars to see what color the wire was coming out of the TV antenna, and it was white. So, the other day when I was rerunning the wires uh, in the boat, I needed a wire that I could pull through, and so I was like, oh, the TV antenna is the white wire. I could just pull that through, because if something happens, it doesn't matter. And I pulled the white wire through, and then I found out, oh, the white wire is the VHF wire. And then I started thinking, but that doesn't make sense, because the TV antenna on top is white. So we have two different color wires, but they, at some point they switch. And I think what happened was two years ago when our mask came down, the riggers who put it back up connected our VHF to the TV antenna and our VHF antenna to the TV, which would explain maybe a few things. I think it would explain why our VHF and the AIS don't work very well. But, so now I'm, I'm looking to make sure that that's actually the case. And it does look like the VHF antenna has a black wire. And the TV antenna has a white wire. That's my story. I did pretty well installing this. It's just this VHF issue. The thing works. It does work. So indeed, the TV antenna was connected to the VHF for the last two years. <laughs> that happened. <laughs> I can say though that that was not my fault, but I did fix it. So we have switched that now and our VHF works way, way better. Our AIS is able to see about 75 nautical miles and we're able to pick up all kinds of VHF 
radio traffic. I don't know if that's good or bad because the VHF was going bananas on yeah. our way here. Well, that's still better than the 10 nautical miles radius that we had on our AIS receiver. Sometimes we would lose ships on the receiver that were right next to us. The reason why we were so excited and so happy to install this AIS transponder is because it was actually a gift from one of our followers. That follower prefers not to be named, which we completely respect, and we would like to take this opportunity to extend another big thank you. It was such a generous gift. Super big thanks, yeah. And no, that follower was neither Sopramar or Raymarine. It was an actual, an actual person. person. Having an AIS transponder means that we are now visible on marinetraffic.com. So if you want to check out the position of Polar Seal at any time, go to marinetraffic.com and search Polar Seal. In the spirit of the generosity that we received, we would like to give our old AIS receiver away. It's not worth a lot of money, but maybe you are refitting a boat, then you know, this can come in handy. That's if you don't plug it into the TV antenna. It's not a good idea. We, we do not recommend. If you want this AIS, AIS250 receiver, send us an email at ryanandsofieontheboat at gmail.com. I will put the address down below. Tell us a little bit about yourself, about your boat, about your project, and uh, yeah, well, let's see. This is another great opportunity for us to extend a big, big thank you to all of you who follow our adventure on YouTube, on Instagram, or on Facebook. Thank you so much for all the comments, for all the thumbs up, and all the support that we receive on Facebook, Instagram, through email. It means so much to us, and we feel really blessed to have such a great community of people around us. We had immense chance to meet some of you guys, and it's always been such a pleasure. Really great. So again, big big thank you. Next week. What's next week? Yes. Octopus. Yeah. Next week. Next week, I have decided that we are going to catch <laughs> and cook an octopus oh in God. Portugal. And it's going to be a good one. Wait, 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 wait. Guys, we really hope to catch you next Tuesday. And if you haven't done it already, subscribe. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>